we're, we're definitely off to a good start. Um, we, uh, and full disclosure to start off with, I, I've got the site leveled and there were a number of holes to dig for the center post, for the foundation for the forge, for my door openings. And uh, yeah, so full disclosure, I got a really good friend and he, uh, he came in with a little excavator and he did in about four hours what it would have taken me about hmm, conservatively two to three weeks by hand. So yeah, but we've got uh, the logs out and peeled. I, sw I swear I spent half my life peeling logs, but we got the four, four logs peeled. I've got it squared up. Um, that took a while too. So that back log to get it squared with the front logs and the door frame. I think I lifted that thing off and <laughs> off and on those uh, my corner anchors if you would I don't know five six times maybe I'm, I'm thinking six times anyway I've got everything squared up if I can just keep it that way until I can get the two uh, shorter walls um, latched in so it's going to be 18 feet by 16 feet and uh, yeah, some things I'm maybe questioning is I put my center post in because I had my friend here, as I said, that's going to be a little problematic for raising logs. Um, but however, <laughs> I, I may be able to utilize it. I'm hoping I can utilize it. So what I've got here is um, typical of my construction. I've got the cart in front of the horse. So all a blacksmith needs for, for moving metal is an anvil or something solid to bang on a hammer and fire so you you could use fire from wood in a pinch but uh, anyway the base for the anvil is a good four feet buried in the ground which gives it a crazy solid sound you can tell by the ring and I don't have it cleated down yet so I've got to do that but I'm a long way from using it so I've got the anvil ready about to build the forge but I don't have any building around me so uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be working on. But over here is the base for our, uh, what will become a stone forge. So, so once again, full disclosure, in forming the base for the forge, I, I utilize some modern material. So in our cabin bill, we try to do everything like they did. I'm, I'm going to take a little uh, free license, if you would, on this build, because I, I want to get this up, closed in before winter. Uh, so yeah, the, the framing for that was some, some modern material, but, um, we've, so, so the two ends you see here, this will be the chimney that's going to go up through the roof. This is the forge, uh, area where I'll do my forging. This is coal storage and a work surface. So, and I'm going to do this all in stone. Uh, so we're, we're below frost level and, and thank goodness Kathy helped me on this project because we mixed 70 bags of, of cement. First of all, we had to tote them back here and we're, we're quite a poke back in here and we had to mix them by hand. So that was a long day, but we got it all done. It's set up pretty good and ready to start, uh, collecting rock. So it's going to be back like building the chimney on the cabin where I have this puzzle with no picture and I'm going to need... Well, for every rock I use, I'm probably going to bring seven or eight back here, but I'll, I'll piece that together. We'll get this built, but a, a bit, a wee bit of, of uh, information, if you would, on, on concrete, it's one of the largest, uh, the production of it is one of the largest pollute, polluters, if you would, in the world. So it's estimated between four and eight and probably closer to 8% of our carbon emissions, uh, come from the production of concrete. So. We try to live close to the land. We grow our food, we hunt and fish, uh, preserve our food. But no matter how hard we try as human beings on this planet, uh, we all have an impact. So, so yeah, we, we have a footprint here as well, but uh, hopefully it's minimal. But uh, I thought I'd talk a wee bit about uh, the history of cement. So normally my wee bits of history are historical characters and events of the 17 and 1800s, but everything has a wee bit of history, as does concrete. So it, it dates back to the uh, to Greece and Rome. Um, and and they, they found out that by mixing uh, volcanic ash and lime, 
uh, when they added water, there was a reaction that would make a solid mass. And, and interestingly enough, for those who have, have traveled to those countries, I have not, but there are some fascinating structures that stand to this day made by that type of, of, of cement, if you would. Really wasn't cement. So th there's an evolution. And if we think about things like uh, a lot of inventions that we think about, a lot of them happen by chance. Fermentation is probably a classic example. Something, something fermented and, and, I don't know, some grapes and somebody produced wine. But cement, or the progress of the development of cement, um, was a, a very thought out process by trying different elements, if you would, to the modern cement that we used for the foundation for our forge. So there's a whole lot of trial and error, apparently, in trying different components to come up with, with the cement. So the next real major evolution is a John Schmieden in 1756. And he comes pretty close, but it's not until 1824 that a Joseph Ashton in, from England um, comes up with pretty much the formula of what we know as, as uh, cement today. Anyway, we've, uh, we've got that done and I'm going to be off collecting some rocks. I'm going to try to get uh, my two cross pieces up, as I said, without moving anything. Uh, I'm going to use um, a real simple notch system in this. So unlike the cabin where I used a real tight saddle notch, curved and, and fit in really tight so I prevented all the drafts, I'm not as concerned about drafts as basically keeping the bulk of the weather out, if you would, and getting a roof over this thing. And, and then I'll have a shop. So I'm going to use what's called a tenon joint, which will just be, a, and I'll be demonstrating that. I, I got a lot of them to make, so you'll get a chance to see them. But basically it's a square notch in the lower log, um, mirrored with a square notch in the bottom of the log that will cross it. So um, basically I try to leave a half of the thickness of the log by taking a quarter off bottom and top. I get a really tight notch that's going to be really fast to make um, and technically I won't need any um, any uh, spikes if you would in each corner because this locks it together it'll, it'll lock it pretty tight um, I'm not going to uh, have a floor in this it's going to be a dirt floor so I got a lot of leveling to do once I get the forge um, built actually built I'll find where that level is going to be and and bring in some soil if I need, and it'll it'll pack over time. But I thought it, I thank Gary Frizzell for this fine rock I'm sitting on. So he went to a lot of work to dig this thing out, and and my estimate is that it weighs somewhere between 400 and 450 pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. And he suggested I put it up as a cap on my chimney because I was looking for a cap for the chimney, and I wasn't having a lot of luck. I kept breaking thinner slabs of rock and. Anyway, he, he said, I got the rock for your chimney. So I went over and we picked up this rock. And uh, anyway, I was unable, obviously. I, there's no way I was going to get 450 pounds up on the top of my chimney. So I found a really good use for it. So the center post, which I, I really didn't want to have, but from a structural point of view, I needed something to carry the roof load. Um, so I've put the post in and I'll be mounting a post a post vise on here. So blacksmiths in, in the era that we're portraying, would use a post vise because it has a, it's like a normal vise, but it has a post that'll come down and it'll rest on this real heavy solid rock. And you can actually forge on it. You can pound on it without damaging the vise. So anyway, shout out to Gary Frizzell and I finally found a use for it, Gary. So here, here's the method I'm going to apply. I've driven a small nail in um, each of the front uh, four corners, if you would. That allowed me to get corner to corner square. And so my next step in making this tenon notch, as I mentioned, quite simple, is I've taken um, the width of the log that's going to marry it, and I've scribed out a line here and here. And then I'm going to go down, um, like a flatten the bottom here to sit on my corner rock. So I'm going to go down um, a quarter of the way through the log assuming a quarter has been removed off the bottom, leaving a solid half half of the log for support or, or structural integrity. So I've got to saw this out, chisel it out, and I'll let my first notch be. 